Imagine this was an enemy aircraft attacking you in the rear turret of a bomber. To keep it in the correct position in your sight, it is necessary to move your gun. A stream of water from a moving nozzle may be compared with a stream of bullets from the moving gun. We see that if the nozzle is moved sideways, the stream of water appears to be curved to one side. Exactly the same thing happens if we have a stream of bullets from a moving gun. This is what tracer looks like when observed from behind the gun. The photographs were taken at night because of the difficulty of being tracer by day. We have arrested the motion to show the apparently curved part of the bullet trace when the gun is moved. The curvature may be in any direction according to the movement of the gun. The degree of curvature depends on how quickly the gun is being moved. This is a small deflection shot. The gun is being moved slowly. We will repeat it, but stop in the middle. We can now observe the gentle curvature indicating that the gun is being moved slowly. Here is a large deflection shot in the same direction. We can now see the much greater curvature of the bullet trace indicating that the gun is being moved rapidly. Here are some further deflection shots. In each case, the speed and the direction of movement of the gun can be estimated from the curvature and direction of the bullet trace. It should be noted that the gun movement indicated in this way is the actual rotation in space, as distinct from movement in relation to your own aircraft. This would be very difficult to determine without the aid of tracer. The deflection, as shown on this diagram, is the distance between the enemy aircraft and the line of sight. In practice, the smaller the deflection, the greater is the accuracy that is likely to be attained. We have shown that bullets from a gun may be compared with water from a nozzle. It is possible, however, to carry this comparison too far and attempt to hold sight with the tracer instead of using it as an aid to sighting in conjunction with the sight. Hold sighting like this cannot be too strongly condemned. On this diagram, we show a continuous stream of tracer bullets as seen by the gunner in the turret of a bomber. In reality, the bursts last one or two seconds. They appear to be penetrating the enemy aircraft, but in actual fact, this is what may be happening. A part of the trace has been used for sighting, which is not at the same range as the enemy aircraft. The bullets are merely crossing the line of sight to the enemy aircraft at this point. and appear to be scoring a hit. To hit the enemy aircraft, we must put it on that part of the bullet trick, which is at the same range as the enemy aircraft. Thus, on this diagram, the enemy aircraft is at 500 yards. Here is the 500 yard point on the trace. Put it on the enemy aircraft. Now see how it appears from the gunner's viewpoint. It appears about five sixths of the distance between the sight center and the end of the trace.
we will study the bullet trace first and show how the point corresponding to any range can be estimated. this film we shall be using the G3 reflector sight. This is the G3 sight. The tracer used is termed G4. It ceases to burn at 600 yards. Here is a point blank shot as seen by the gunner. This diagram shows the same shot seen from above, with a trace mark at 150, 300, and 600 yards range. Here it is again, as seen by the gunner. Notice that the bullets appear to fly quickly towards the center of the site, and then to remain near the center until they go out. The reason why the bullets at first rise slightly above the site center and then fall slightly below it, is that they are falling under gravity and the site has been slightly adjusted to allow for this correctly at 400 yards range. Here is a small deflection shot as seen by the gunner. Here is a diagram of a similar shot. Here it is seen from above. Here is a larger deflection shot as seen by the gunner. And here as seen from above. The direction in which the trace moves away from the center of the site depends upon the direction of movement of the gun. We will show some actual deflections in various directions. Gun swinging across to the right, up and to the left. Here again is the model seen from above with marks at 600, 300 and 150 yards range. Here it is seen through the site. Notice that the 300 yard point is about halfway between the site center and the end of the trace and that the 150 yard point is about one quarter of this distance from the center. Estimates of the allowance when the range is less than 600 yards must be made by reference to the end of the trace and the center of the site. The part where the trace is flying towards the site center must be ignored. Here are various small deflection shots from two guns as seen through a sight ring in diagrammatic form. With the aid of tracer, we can thus estimate the points on the bullet path corresponding to any range for any small deflection shot. It now remains to estimate the range of the enemy aircraft so that we can put it on the correct points on the trace. This shows an ME-109 as it would appear at various ranges. Now it is at 600 yards and appears to fill about a quarter of the diameter of the sight ring. When it appears to fill a little more than half the diameter of the sight ring, the range of this particular aircraft is 300 yards. The ME-109 is now at a range of 150 yards and fills the sight ring. This enemy fighter is used only as an example. Other aircraft would look larger or smaller according to their wing span. 
Here is an ME110. Now it is at 600 yards. Three hundred yards. And a hundred and fifty yards. Here is a view of an HE 111 bomber at various ranges. This shows the Heinkel 112 fighter. Accurate range estimation can only be obtained by constant practice with a sight against scale models set at scale distances on the ground. In practice, the following sequence of operations is recommended for small deflection. In this example of the enemy aircraft is an ME-109. Firstly, aim point blank. Wait until you estimate by his apparent size in the ring that he is at a range of 600 yards. Secondly, Fire a burst and watch the trace carefully right to the end. Then also aim to put the target where the trace ended. Hold at this site until he reaches 400 yards range. The bullet group or cone of fire will cover small mistakes. Then alter your sight until the enemy aircraft is halfway along the trace measured from the sight center. Thirdly, hold this sight until the enemy aircraft reaches 150 yards. Then far point blank. Again, the bullet group will cover small errors. We will demonstrate this with the model. First, recognize the enemy aircraft, in this case an ME-109. Aim point blank. Wait until he is 600 yards away, in this case a quarter of the ring. Far a burst and put the target where the trace ended. And then continuously alter his position on the trace as he approaches.
No, he is at 300 yards. At 150 yards, aim point blank. We will repeat once again that tracer must not be used in this fashion, merely putting the enemy aircraft on the most obvious part of the trace and to getting about range. In this case, the plane, an ME-109, is about 500 yards away as it occupies a little over a quarter of the ring, but the allowance is right for about 200 yards. Here are some examples of correct positioning. This is an ME-109 at 600 yards. Its correct position is therefore on the end of the trace as shown. Notice the apparent size relative to the ring of this and other enemy aircraft at various ranges and the points corresponding to these ranges for different deflections. At 300 yards, the enemy aircraft should be placed about halfway between the site center and the end of the trace. At 150 yards, aim point blank. Here is a Heinkel 111, which is more than twice as big as an ME 109. Its size, relative to the sight ring, tells us that it is at 600 yards and must therefore be put on the end of the trace. Here it is at 300 yards with various deflections. At 150 yards, aim point blank for all deflections. Here again is the ME-109. Note once more how a trial burst is fired when it reaches 600 yards. Now, it is then maintained on the correct point on the bullet path according to its range.